ไมคงเวียดนามพูดแกคุณมังกรคนเวียดนามอันนี้คนพูดอันนี้หน้าเหมือนเวียดนามดูมันกันคงเวียดนามเหรอดูมันทำไมทำไมคงคิดคงเวียดนามพูดภาษาเวียดนามได้ไหมได้นิดหน่อยได้นิดหน่อยคงทำอะไรอันนี้คงพูดแกบคุงทำอะไร I say สิ้นเจ้าสวัสดีค่ะ What does that mean สวัสดีค่ะ What does that mean? Hello. Oh, wow, very good. And then what do they say? I don't know. What do they say? What do they say? Yeah, what do they say? And then what do they say? Because you don't understand. It's not from Vietnam. It's 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 from Vietnam. ต้ยลาเงื่อนไทยอ่าโอเคเอ็นคงเข้าใจไหมไม่ถึงเข้าใจเข้าใจ alright in Vietnam with my Vietnam friend there Miss Nat how do you say Miss Nat in Vietnam language ah ไม่รู้downtown right now and downtown actually is on the river and they've got three bridges that are all lit up at night that all of Vietnam love colors and so all these bridges there's one down there there's the dragon bridge here and then there's a third one and all of them are lit up at night which is really great plus if you look down here you see the promenade that I'm standing on which has sculptures along here great place to exercise and walk right along the river so this is downtown it's got anything you could want we actually just found on the way here to shoot this a Thai restaurant for Nat there's a Thai restaurant here so she's gonna be good to go but any kind of food there's Indian food and, and pizzas and Italian and of course there's Vietnamese food everywhere and the difference I mentioned before between Vietnamese food and Thai food is gonna be swapping out rice for noodles everything is a noodle here they do have rice they have rice and chicken Nat last night got rice and a pork chop or pork ribs or something like that I forget what it was but they do have rice but a lot of times it's broken rice it doesn't have the same texture or consistency but you can get rice in a lot of places with some kind of dish but you're not going to get these flavorful dishes like you have in Thailand with the lemongrass and the garlic and uh, all, all the herbs and stuff uh, that we, the curries that we cook with in Thailand. It's a different cuisine, but it's still a tasty cuisine. We like it, we enjoy it. Another thing to keep in mind if you come over is the, the money. Uh, it's gonna be really weird when you're paying, you know, 50,000, 60,000 or a million baht or something for a meal or a hotel. What I try and do is keep the, the money in the denominations starting from the highest which is 500,000 on down and I keep them so that the numbers are pointed towards me so it's easy to go through and pay for things count the zeros the hardest thing is getting the right amount of zeros we're still learning the numbers Nat is getting better at the numbers and how much does something cost and things like that but I'm gonna show you go from here even head off to Hoi An which is only about 30 minutes down the road and show you what's there as well but this is Da Nang. It's a great little city. Uh, it's a bustling city. I think it was voted as uh, one of the best places for Vietnamese to live in Vietnam. It's got a good mixture of, uh, of everything. The beaches and uh, yesterday I actually went body surfing and so that was really great. I haven't done that for a long time. Great waves. But we'll check things out for you. Okay, so we're back in the market. And I'm in the market today for something special. This lady was so nice that she gave us the food and everything. I wanted to give her a little present. So we got her a little uh, a little bag so she can put her money and stuff in. It's uh, actually, it looks just like the Hill Tribe bags from, uh, from Thailand that we found. So let's see if we can find her. Hey, hello. <laughs> I have something for you. This is for you. <laughs> there you go. 
Anyway, anyway. Anyway, there you go. Ah, you can put yeah, your money yeah. in there now. <laughs> All right. How are you today? Okay. Are you okay? No, no, I don't. Don't give me any. No, 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 no. This is for you. I, I wanted to give you. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. No. <laughs> no. It's okay. It's okay. No. <laughs> She's too nice. She's too nice. Huh? Oh, thank you. Come on, come on. Thank you. Oh. Wow. I feel bad now. She gave us more food. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Wow. And, and the interesting thing about this was what she ended up giving us today is Nat's favorite snack. We actually, one of the things that were on our list to buy when we came to Vietnam was these little coconut crackers. They're delicious. And so it was on our list and the, the lady actually gave us the crackers. She's so nice. I don't know. I wanted to come do something nice for her without, because she always does something nice for us. Amazing. She's an amazing person. So there you go. I didn't really want to take the crackers, but I know they're Nat's favorite crackers, so we have to take them. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Yeah, those Vietnam people, they're just so mean, huh? <laughs> oh, great lady. Guess what? Guess what day it is? It's Sunday and a lot of restaurants are closed and Nat and I were really hungry and we started looking, traveling up and down these roads trying to find something that was familiar that we could eat. Finally we just gave up and we pulled into this place because we saw it had noodles in a pitcher or something and it turns out this was really good. Something we've never eaten before. We didn't even know how to pronounce it or to read it. And uh, the lady could speak enough English to sort of give us an idea. And it's halfway gone, and I said, hey, we should shoot a video of this. But Nat got this one, this noodle. It's like a vermicelli noodle. And they said fish ball, but you can see it's like a fish cake. So she's got that with like a clear broth. And that one was called, and I'll put the picture up of the side. Cha uh, how do you say Nat? Cha -cha? I don't know. It's the first one on the, I'll put up the picture. It's the first one on the top, 25,000 dong. And I got one. She said, she kept saying something, something. I didn't understand. She went and got some kind of card and came back and it was crab. So I got one with crab and you can see it had some oil cooked. And actually all those over there sitting in that tray is the crab. And if you can see the tray over there behind me. And all that was the crab cake. So this has got like crab cake in it. Um, and then the condiments that you put in it, they have a big bowl of pickled vegetables here, and it's onions, pickled onions, pickled carrots, and peppers. And they say that goes in the soup, so I put some of the, the vinegar or whatever that is, and some onions, carrots, and peppers in there, and the peppers are hot, so be careful. Also, more peppers, but the, the lemon or lime, so put some lime in there as well, and the veggies went in. And this one was the crab, I forget what they should call it. Rucha, something I don't know how to pronounce any of this stuff, but really tasty. So we got something new now on our list of things we can eat. Of course, they serve you the uh, obligatory tea, free tea, and you got some fish sauce to put in in here, and also some ground up peppers if you want chilies. So this was really cool, something new, something different, something adventurous, but they're both very tasty. So this time we struck gold. <laughs> What is it? Richa. Yours? And the Chapo. Richa. Yeah. Richa. Crab soup with vermicelli. But anyway, very tasty. Give them a shot if you have an opportunity. I think you'll like them. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention 25,000. I'll go ahead and convert it for you right now. That is about a dollar ten US for a bowl of soup with crab or with the fish cake. Well, it's Sunday night in Danang, and there's a couple things that happen Saturday and Sunday night. 
and that's the Dragon Bridge. We're right across from the Dragon Bridge, and there's a market here that we went by a couple times, and I want to see what they have here. I think there's food in here. I think there's some clothing and everything, but I'm not sure, but it's a big event. I don't know if it's just for Chinese people, because the Chinese people descend on Da Nang. I mean, it's overwhelmed with Chinese people here. But anyway, we're gonna check out this market and see what it has. I don't know if this is every night or if it's only on Saturday and Sunday nights. I know it was on Saturday night and today's Sunday. So, But this is an event. There's a lot of people here. So we're gonna check out the market and see what it has. I think it's a one-off event. I don't think they do this every weekend or all the time. I think this was a special event, and it was similar to what we have in Thailand. A lot, it was a, a lot of products for sale that you see at all the events, and some food. Uh, not what we were looking for as far as what we wanted to eat, but uh, it was a lot of activity and a lot of energy and stuff like that. So it was fun to walk through. But uh, now I think we're looking for some serious food. So there you go. Always something to do. A lot of energy in Danang. A lot of energy. something we need to accomplish before we leave Da Nang. What would that be? I don't know if you saw my last series I did when I came to Vietnam, but when we were in Da Nang, we went to a place called Marble Mountain. And when I was in Marble Mountain, we were climbing around in these caves and up these hills, and it was very strenuous. And during that time somewhere, I don't know what happened, but I hit my watch. I have a Tag Heuer watch that my parents gave me when I was really young. And I wear it all the time. It's in all the videos and everything. But when I actually came out of Marble Mountain, I looked down at my wrist, the bezel had popped off my watch somewhere in Marble Mountain. So we thought about, we only had a few, like, you know, a half a day before we were gonna leave Marble Mountain. So I didn't have time to go back and look for it. Well, since we're here, this was on my list of things to do. So I'm gonna go back. I don't think we're gonna, it, the chances of finding the inside Marble Mountain, because I don't know if it was in the bottom or the top or wherever, it would be almost impossible. I think it's, but I've looked online now for eight months or something, and I can't find the bezel to buy the bezel separately, because these old watches are fairly old. So I've actually bought a replacement watch, a used replacement watch, but the other one has sentimental value. It was bought for me by my parents. So I'd like to get the bezel. So we're gonna take a trip out to Marble Mountain really quick. Let me see if somebody turned it into a lost and it's a lost and found or something. Because it'd be really nice to get my watch bezel back. And we're here already. It's only about 15 minute drive or something. So we're gonna drive out there, see if somebody has turned it in to lost and found and I can get it. Because I'd rather wear the watch my parents gave me than this used one, but it's actually exactly the same, but it doesn't have the sentimental value. So let's head out to Marble Mountain and see if I can find the watch bezel or see if somebody turned in the watch bezel. All right, let's go.
this is how it all played out. I tried different places. Nobody really understood what I was talking about because this is a concept. I actually had a small bezel that I, I that doesn't fit that I actually bought and it wasn't the right one and I tried showing them as well as asking them, is there like a lost and found? Could somebody have found it? And they were confused seeing one already and I don't have the watch that doesn't have one. But anyway, what happened was finally Somebody told, pointed to a man who was working on this fountain over here, on this little pool. He was working over here and said, go talk to him. He looked like a worker. So I went over there, and then it turns out that this man spoke great English, and he works in the office. And so I asked him, okay, did, you, did, well, did anybody turn in this watch bezel? And he said, no. He says, I would know. I work in the office. Nobody's turned it in. He says, it's probably so small that it's not even noticeable for somebody to pick up and turn in. So they don't have it in the lost and found in the office. And for me to try and trek through this cave, and then if I don't find it all the way up to the top of the other side, if you watch my video before, this is an endurance course. So that's not gonna happen. So I'm just gonna continue to try and find this online uh, from my other watch. And, uh, but we gave it a good try. Uh, you never know. You know, sometimes you get the bear, sometimes the bear gets you. But we gave it a shot. It was one of the things I had on my list of things to do when I was in Da Nang uh, to try and find that watch bezel. But it's lost somewhere in Marble Mountain. something. I've been on a mission for days. I can't tell you how many hours I've spent on this mission. And you know what the mission is? Somebody told me about in Vietnam they actually make coffee with egg in it. And I was like, what? And then I looked up on the internet and everybody says, oh, this is delicious. And then somebody on YouTube said, oh, you got to try this coffee with egg. So I said, okay, I'm going to try the coffee with egg. I must have gone to 20 coffee shops around Da Nang looking for this coffee with egg. And on the internet, search, 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 and I went in yesterday to a place and the guy goes, he says, no, we don't have that. Everybody wants to give coffee with milk. I said, no, I want the coffee with egg. And so yesterday the guy goes, I said, do you know where I could get coffee with egg? And he goes, yeah, Hanoi. So today we're in Hanoi. No, I'm just kidding. We're not in Hanoi. We're still in Da Nang. So I did some more research today, and I actually found a video where it showed some guy making this on YouTube. And I looked on his apron, and it said, and I don't know how to pronounce this, but it's T-O with these pronunciation symbols over the O, and then cafe. And it's in Da Nang. So we came, and guess what? they have the coffee with the eggs. So I'm gonna get a chance to try this finally. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, Nat's gonna have a mango smoothie. So we're in this place, very artistic, very trendy, very, I don't know what to say, but then you can hear it's got, they got great music. They got art on the wall, which is very cool. Or check out this one. So it's very artsy kind of place here. Uh, we, there's also other foreigners in here, so somehow it's gotten on to, uh, onto the, the, the backpacker or traveler scene here. And so it's a very cool place. 
probably more expensive for coffee and other things here, but you got air conditioning, it's gonna be quiet, the ambiance is gonna be good because it's actually got music and stuff here. So I'm looking forward to finally trying this coffee with egg, and you get to come along with me for this event. This is our, gonna be our last day, actually, in Danan, so it's sort of bittersweet. Anyway, so we're off tomorrow, so today I needed to get this coffee, and so there'd be more of a chance, in my opinion, that I'd get it here, and I found it, so that's great. The other thing we needed to do before we moved on was exchange money, and of course, we're coming here. You might be coming over with US dollars or something. Well, I'm coming with Thai baht, which is a lot harder to exchange. If you're looking for any kind of exchange, in, in Vietnam, you go to, if you're not in an airport where they have ex currency exchange booths, you actually got to go to a gold shop or a jewelry stop shop where they can actually exchange money. And last trip when I was here, they actually, those were actually giving me better rates than what I had on my conversion on my phone. This was a little lower, and I showed them the, the, the lady wanted to see what the conversion was I was showing on my phone. And she said, that's for you selling not for you buying um, and so I got a great exchange rate it was very very close anyway so we got our money exchange yesterday we're getting our egg coffee today we're gonna eat some of our favorite food today which is uh, ban xiao which is uh, sort of an omelet that you wrap up in rice paper with herbs and dip and sauce and everything so we're gonna finish up doing some videos for you all um, get our affairs in order we're gonna actually get a taxi to come at like 5.15 in the morning because we got an early flight at 6.55 tomorrow. So, yeah, we're just checking off the list to make sure we've done everything we want to do in Danone. But we really got a chance to get to know, know the place better and I'll do a little final synopsis for you of our, our, our time here and before we get on the plane. So, just waiting for my egg coffee. I should have stopped, I should have stayed and watch them make it and videotape it. But you can actually see them in this place making egg coffee on YouTube if you, uh, if you do a search for it. So anyway, back in a minute to taste test our egg coffee. before you is it good yeah maybe so Nat's got a mango smoothie you want me to pay now okay so the cafe was 34 and the mango smoothie was 32 so let me taste test Nat's first wow it's safe to drink Nat I have to always protect her from bad things. Okay, and here's the name actually. There's the name of the, the coffee shop. So if you're in Danang, check it out. Okay. Okay, here we go. I don't know whether I should stir this first, if there's an egg sitting in the bottom or what, but it looks very rich. Wow. Very strong coffee. I can't even describe the taste of this. I can taste the egg a little bit. Wow. I don't even know how to describe it. You gotta try this. It's really good. So they've sweetened it up a little bit, probably with a sweetened condensed milk, and then somehow added an egg, and I don't know if the egg's raw or what. I'll have to look on YouTube myself and see how to make this. Wow. I guess it's healthy, it's got extra protein in it. And, and if, you, I'm th if you think I'm making excuses of why it would be good, but it's really tasty. But you gotta love coffee because coffee is very strong. But wow, wow, I really like that. I'm gonna have to make this when I get home too. So it was well worth looking for. And I suggest you try this if you're a coffee lover, check it out, try one. It's excellent. And that's mango smoothie is good too, huh? huh? What? She's giving me the don't drink my smoothie look? 
Ah, excellent. Both are excellent. Thank you so much. So, there you go. Okay, we're going to have our coffee, and then we're going to go get some pancakes, uh, Ban Xiao. If you saw my series last time we were in Hanoi, you saw Nat make uh, Ban Xiao pancakes with the rice paper rolls. So you can check that out. And I'll maybe if I remember, I'll put the link to it. If not, just go back to Hanoi. I think it was our first video of Hanoi last time. And you'll be able to see that. But we're going to enjoy the music. We're going to enjoy the ambiance. We're going to enjoy our drinks. And then we're out of here. All right. Well, guess what? Our trip is coming to an end. In about 12 hours from now, we're going to be doing that right there. We're taking off from Da Nang. So let me give you my opinion coming back, having come back to Da Nang, because we were here before. And there were two places, actually three places I wanted to come back to, to check out more of. So what do I think about Da Nang having come back and spent more time here? Well, a couple things. One is, it's a city. It's a great little city. I really like the city. I think it has all the amenities that you could want as a retiree. It's got the, the Vietnamese beach where there's hardly anybody on it. You can go to the other beach, China Beach, which has all the tourists and everything. They have really nice waves there. This is like, if you equate the Gulf and the sea, these have the little waves of the, the Gulf. And the other side has the, the waves of the sea. So it has a beach, it has a shopping mall, a really nice shopping mall with movie theaters, with English soundtrack. So you can get out of the heat, you can shop, you can get all the stuff you want. It's got a supermarket in the mall and everything. Great. Food, you can get Western food, you can get a plethora of places to eat. Any kind of food, coffee, anything, it's great. So let me tell you about the people. The people that I've had contact with in Da Nang were incredibly friendly. It was amazing how friendly the people were. I've learned who to contact, to, to get things done, to ask questions of, to interact with, and it's made a world of difference in the experience here in Vietnam. So this time I was smart about who I, I associated with, and it's been a phenomenal experience as far as the people are concerned. Very kind, very gracious in Da Nang. Now the internet, Last time I was here, the internet was really good. This time it's been a little bit sketchy. When we're on Wi-Fi, it's, it comes in and out. And also when we're using G, it seems like it, it's, it's cutting in and out. It's not consistent. So the internet has been a little bit of a challenge this time, which I didn't experience last time. So something to keep in mind. If you come in rainy season, expect rain. It's raining almost, it was raining almost every day. Today's been a sunny day. We haven't had any rain yet. And so if you come during rainy season, expect the rain, but also expect cleaner air. The air quality is much better during rainy season. The other thing I wanted to mention to you was about eating. There are food stands and food stalls spread out around Da Nang at night to eat. In Thailand, they sort of group together. So there'll be like almost a market filled with food stands and food stalls and stuff like that. Here they're spread out more. So if you're looking for one area where there's some, a, a lot of these nighttime food stands or food stalls, you can find a couple of them, but they're not prolific like they are in Thailand. But food is cheap. You can go to a restaurant and eat just as cheap here as you could at a food stand or a food stall in, in, in Thailand. So keep that in mind. So I think it's a really great place to check out. Also, it's cheap. If you don't remember about the prices, because I went through the prices last time I was here, I'm going to edit this in, check out the prices real quick, and I'll be right back. Now, I got some costs for you. Uh, real quick, let me run off a couple of these. A basic lunchtime menu, including a drink, in the business district would be about $4.30 U.S. This is at the conversion today's rate. Um, monthly rate for an 85 uh, square meter or 900 square foot furnished apartment uh, in a normal area, not a high rent district, would be about $375 a month. 
Um, for a 45 meter square meter or 480 square foot uh, furnished studio apartment in a normal area would be about $280. Uh, our hourly rate for somebody to help clean your place would be about $2.50 an hour. A liter or a quarter gallon of gas is going to cost you about a dollar. A uh, package of Marlboro cigarettes are going to run you about a dollar fifty. Twelve large eggs are going to cost you about a dollar forty and two liters of Coke um, about 83 cents. And bread for two people for one day about 65 cents. So there you go. Those were the prices that I mentioned before. So is it inexpensive to live in Danang? Yeah, it's really inexpensive. So everything's great, but there's a caveat. If you come to live here, the driving, if you decide to drive, it's a kamikaze experience. And it's suicidal because we didn't grow up with their set of rules about driving. They don't use turn signals a lot of the time when they're changing lanes or turning. Big issue for us. They'll come the wrong way. You'll turn the corner, and me being, having lived in Thailand, I'm used to being on the left, I'll, I'll be on the right on the correct side for here, and there'll be traffic coming at me. I'll be like, my brain all of a sudden freaks out thinking I'm going the wrong way. I'm going the right way, they're going the wrong way. The driving here is really unnerving. If you decide to come live here, I suggest taking a taxi everywhere you go. One of the reasons is it's real cheap. Number two, it's real safe. And number three, the way they have the road set up, the left-hand lane is for cars. The motorbikes, the cars and motorbikes can go in the center lane and then motorbikes in the right. So there's a left-hand lane all the time that's open for the cars that they can get by. So they just honk the horns and keep going. So you can get around fairly quickly in a car as well. So take a taxi. That's my suggestion. Or number two suggestion would be get a Vietnamese friend that has grown up here and this is normal. Get on the back of the motorbike and shut your eyes because you're going to be freaking out. But other than the horn honking and the driving, it's great. It's a great place. I'll be, I see myself coming back here. I'm not sure if it would be the number one place I'd retire to, but it's sure on the list. That's for sure. So come check it out and give Vietnam a shot. It might not be Da Nang. It might be Da Lat. It might be any of the places I've covered or places I haven't covered. Some people recommend other places that, are, that I haven't been to, and there's reasons why I haven't been to some of them. A couple of the places are, you know, like, infiltrated with a Russian community, and so it doesn't really give you the feel of being in Vietnam. And so I, I sort of push those off to the side, and, and I put them on the back burner. But the places I've been to, I was really great. Today, when we woke up, the difference was like 7 or 8 degrees Celsius between the temperature in Da Nang and the temperature in Da Lat. So we're looking forward to getting to the cooler weather, to being able to get around on a motorbike without risking our lives. And so come along with us. We're getting up real early. Our, our flight's like 6.30 in the morning, so we got to get up really early, and we'll be off or to the airport. Uh, 5 a.m. We've got the taxi coming. Should be here in about five minutes. But I do want to give another shout out to the staff here at the hotel we stayed at, which is the name of the hotel is Hoang Lindan. It's right across the street from the beach. I think it's $25 a night for the room. Great deal. The staff is really, really attentive, very friendly and you get free breakfast and everything. The room is great. Hardwood furniture, big bed, mini fridge, hot water, bring your own coffee. You can make your own coffee in the morning with the hot water and the cups are there. 
the rain shower, everything's great. The room was awesome. The staff is awesome. So two thumbs up for the hotel. So anyway, we're off to the airport. Hey, JC here. If you like that video, make sure to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel here. Also, we have another video up here you're going to be really interested in watching as well. And if you're looking for all the details of how to retire in Thailand in one place, plus a group of people to support you, check this out over here. Give it a click.